What's in YouTube today? We have a TikTok SQL interview question for data analysts, data scientists, software engineers, even and anything in between. I don't know about you guys. I love TikTok. I also hate it. I kind of delete it quite often and then reinstall it. I love the comment section. I love the videos. I have a lot of top comments. I just like the humor on there. The algorithm is really good and TikTok is an excited, is an exciting company to join, especially with how they utilize data. Now, this question is also interesting. It's marked as medium. It has a lot of different requirements, which makes it tough. And it's quite realistic in terms of coming up in an interview. So let's get into it and let's dumb it down and conquer it step by step. So the task is that TikTok wants to find out what the top two most active user days were during an advertising campaign they ran in the first week of August 2022 being 1st of August to 7th of August. We should identify the two days with the highest user activity during the advertising campaign. We've also specified that user activity must be measured in terms of unique users. We should output the day, date, and number of users. And we should be careful that some function can add a padding or white spaces around the string. For a solution to be correct, you should trim the extra padding. So that's just a note. Now let's get started with our solution. And a good thing to do during an actual interview is to make a list of all the things the question asks of you, just to make sure that you have everything and you can kind of take care of everything, a single thing, instead of trying to do everything at once. So for this one, our time frame is August 1st to August 7th. That's when the advertising campaign ran in 2022. Now we should identify the top two days with highest activity in terms of unique users. That's how they define activity. Think about it as engagement as well. But really unique users is just a way of defining daily active users, so to say. And that's a key metric for pretty much any social media platform or mobile game or any, any service website really. Now we should output the date, date and number of users. And then we have that note about being careful about white spaces, which we're gonna take care of later on. So we can take a look at the expected output to just see the output that makes it easy and we don't really have to make a note. We could make a note about these white spaces, be careful about spaces. Anyways, let's get started by writing out our solution. So solution actually asks of us to give out the day of the week as a word as well. The date visited, uh, the day the site or the app was visited and the number of users. Let's just get started by actually double checking the input table, which is user streaks. We just have a user ID and date visited in there. So let's spell out date visited as our date column. And let's just try to, to count users for now. So number of users, let's say that's the count of distinct user IDs. Makes sense, right? And we're selecting that from this table called user streaks. Now in order to count per date visited, we need to group by date visited as well. And that's actually available with auto completion now to fill up that field, which is a new feature on Starter Scratch. And if we run that code, it's going to give us the activity. And by doing that, we can already read out what the highest activity dates were. We just need to put that into code. Now, what I find here as well is that we have a long list of dates. And that reminds me that we actually need to take care of that time frame. So we're going to select from. And that's where the where comes in. So in here. We say the date visited, it's going to pop up here as well. It's going to be between. And now it should be August 1st. 
and August 7th. All right. So between works inclusively, so it's going to include the first and second date you're specifying here. So it's actually going to take these as well and not just what's in between them, but the, the limits are included in the range. So by running this code, we, sh we can basically double check this and we have the full week of activity. And it seems like the highest activity is 5444 as in the expected output. So that's looking all good. We took care of the first one. Let's just put an X here as being complete maybe. That's kind of overkill, but yeah, for now, I just want to show you how you could basically line up the requirements. So we just want the top two days with the highest activities. So we're going to have to rank these somehow or limit them. Now, as the expected solution kind of hints at allowing for ties, we have to take care of that using a ranked window function because then we can filter on the rank and just include the top two ranks. If it were actually, if it was without ties, we could just order by the user count and then limit to two and we have the highest two. If this was actually technical and actual user numbers, you wouldn't have a tie probably because the user number would be in the millions and it's very unlikely to have a tie in there because it's just a very long number. But for this example, let's just go with it and come up with that rank. So immediately after that count, I'm gonna come up with the rank based on that count as well. So I'm going to spell out my window function syntax, which is the window function over and then in parentheses partition by and order by. I do this all the whenever I face a window function problem. You've probably seen that if you follow the channel. And for this one, we can exclude order by because, or actually we can exclude partition by because we don't need to look at the, the table in, based on any partition or based on like a like certain app version or platform or anything we just want to look at everything and create the rank by the user count and we can just reuse this count function in here as well and that should create our rank let's call it r and we just need to make sure it, we are using the correct order so we would we want the highest rank on top. So we're gonna use descending. So the highest one will be the highest rank. Let's just see what that gives us because I kind of did a few things here. We have an order to our output now, which is created by that rank, which is using this order by clause. And we have a rank of one and then two, two, two for the user count being four, which is what we want because this basically allows for ties. Now, what's left is we need to filter to the rank being two or lower because it's apparently what we want. We want the top two highest activity dates or days in the week. And that's how we get that. So let's just select date visited and users, which is all gonna pop up in the autocomplete from this subquery and we need to give it an alias for it to work. So let's call that ranked activity or anything. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. And uh, it's basically ranked daily activity. And let's not forget about our filter. R should be small or equal to two. And that should give us our output. We just need to add the day of the week and we're gonna do that by using this two character function to call. And this is something you need to basically know in your SQL dialect. It, de it depends on which one you're using. But for this one, you take a date column 
and then specify which format you want it in. In this case, it's day for day of the week. And this should give you the day of the week with that. So if I try to see if that's accepted. Oh, camera just ran out of battery. But if I try to see if that accepted, it's actually not accepted. And that's what that's the last thing you need to take care of, which is the white spaces. So it seems like there are invisible white, white spaces here for these because I assume the initial date column had more characters than the spelling of the weekday. And that's why Wednesday is correct and the other ones are not. Because yeah, Wednesday has more than 10 characters and the other ones don't. Yeah, and the date always has 10 characters. So that's something technical, something you don't necessarily need to know. But if I use the trim function, it's going to get rid of white spaces here. And that's what's going to help us get an accepted solution. And that's the last of our requirements. So we did everything. We kind of divided and conquered the problem, which is amazing. Get an accepted solution. It's a good problem, I, I think, because it combines different things. And you kind of need to piece them together. Sometimes I have medium or easy questions here where it's just, it's just about one concept. And it's quite simple and it's just, sometimes I feel like the videos are too short even or too simple, but this is just a bunch of simple concepts put together and then it makes a bit of a complex problem. But usually any problem is just a combination of easier things as you can see. So for this one, we have a count sting, we have a simple date filter, we have a rank window function, and then we also have that getting that weekday and trimming that, which is basically it. So I just wanted to point out that it's good to have maybe a cheat sheet or a list or overview of date manipulations and to be really good at one SQL dialect. And then the trimming is just a technical thing, which you probably don't need to know. So in an actual interview, I don't think, or if I was the interviewer, I wouldn't say this has to be accepted code. You can just basically make this a pseudo code function. So you just say there, I assume there exists a function which translates a date to a weekday, which is the case. You don't know the function. So let's just say maybe you can write weekday update visited and you assume that this is going to take the weekday and then the interviewer knows what you mean and what you try to do. So yeah, in a real world scenario, we'll just Google it and then have it right there or ask ChatGPT or anything. So yeah, don't, don't get held up on that. And yeah, that's going to be it for that problem. It's kind of weird to talk without the camera on, but I'm going to have a link to that problem down below. As always, if you want to try it, there might be slightly different techniques to doing that same thing. You could make this subquery a CTE as always, of course, you could use different date or weekday functions, depending on the SQL dialect and yeah, you could even try using different rank functions as well. Anyways, that's it for me. Give this video a like if it was helpful. I think this was a good problem to go through and to practice, especially if you're applying to TikTok. And that's it. See you all next time. Bye-bye.